But then what? Now the questions. Who is your Lord? And you said, well, I already know it's a law. That might be true if you really worshipped Allah alone without partners. But if, if there was anything in what you were saying is not true, then you won't be able to say it. If the person was saying it but not really doing it, it won't benefit them. Only ikhlas. Surah ikhlas. You know Surah ikhlas. Read it. This is the belief of the real Muslim. He knows Allah has no partners. He knows Allah doesn't have a son or a daughter. And he knows there's nothing like Allah. This is the Iman in Allah. And then, what will happen? You say, Allah is my Lord. The next question. What was your deen? Not religion. Deen. Deen means what you did with your life. Did you get up in the morning early and pray your Fajr on time, mashallah? And you stopped your work for Dhuhr, mashallah. Asr came and you stopped, mashallah. Maghrib and Isha on time in the masjid, mashallah. This was your deen. You fasted properly in the month of Ramadan and you paid the zakat. Alhamdulillah. And Hajj, mashallah. And you were good to the orphans, the yatim and the miskeen, the impoverished and the poor. You helped them. You took time from your busy schedule of piling up money to take some time to help the poor, to help the orphans. And you stayed away from people who were gossiping and backbiting and making ghiba. You stayed away. You said, I don't want any of that. I don't want to talk about people. You obeyed Allah and His Messenger and those in authority over you. Now I saw some brothers said, huh? That's in the Quran, brother. Allah put people in authority over us. We have no choice but to obey Allah, His Messenger and those in authority. Alhamdulillah, we find here in Malaysia very good brothers that understand this deen. But in other places in the world, they didn't understand it. And when they began to rebel against their Muslim leaders, Allah took them away and gave them worse. And when they rebelled against them, they got worse. And they keep rebelling until a whole entire Muslim population is actually in a prison in their own country. Because they keep rebelling against Allah and His Messenger and their leaders. What is your deen? What are you doing with your life? How do you spend your time? Dhikr of Allah or SpongeBob SquarePants? How do you spend your time? Reading the Quran or watching the sports? How did you spend your time? What did you do with your time that Allah gave you? That was your deen. And the third question, who was your prophet? And you say, ah, oh, I know that, that's going to be real easy. Oh, really? Actually, that's going to be one of the hardest of all after we got past these other two, because now it's still a question. Why would that question be there? You say you believed in Allah, mashallah, you did some good acts, mashallah, but did you do everything on the order of the way that the Rasul told you to do it? Or did you accept people to make up something else and you followed that instead? 
And I've been in some countries where you cannot believe the things that some Muslims do. And when you try to correct them, they say, oh, but this is what we've always done. Our fathers before us, they did the same thing. And you say, but that's in the Quran too. It says that in the Quran, we're doing what we found our forefathers doing. Does it make it right? Would you like to know one example? The Jews, the children of Israel, before us, they worshiped Allah. Many of them were very good, wonderful people. We wish to be like those people. But they began to admire some of the people, other people who had treasures and wealth, and some of them followed those people and began to accept their gods. One of the things they found was people who would cut the trees, cut the trees and take the trees into their houses for good luck. They had a tree god called Wudin. This is an ancient religion still mentioned in the encyclopedia today. They believed that this tree could help them and they would decorate their house with this tree. So Allah sent their prophet to them, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was saying, this is what your Lord has said. Don't be like the mushrikeen. Don't go into the forest. Don't cut the tree. Don't take it into your house. You carry it on your shoulder, it cannot hurt you, it cannot benefit you. Don't do it. It's in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 6, 7, 8. Read it. In the Bible, Old Testament. Don't do it. So when we come to the Christians, when I was a Christian and I said, Guys, we have in our book, we're not supposed to do this. And they say, Oh, you're just too strict. We're having fun. This is what we all do. This is what our fathers did before. It's no big deal. I said, but it says not to do it. Why are we doing it? Some of them listened. Most of them laughed. But the leaders of them, the ones selling the trees and making the money, they accused us. You know what they said? You're fundamentalists. Exactly what they said. Now in Islam, when our teachers come to us and they tell us, please, don't follow the way of disbelievers. This is what the Quran says. And you said, oh, you're a Wahhabi. Just like that. You've been warned right now, what's going on here. You're being warned clearly by very good scholars who understand about practicing other religions and claiming that it's exercise. If you exercise, it's not a problem. The scholar said it. I read the fatwa. I read the fatwa and I read what he said after the fatwa to make sure you understood. Exercise is not the problem. It's when you begin to add the worship part, it's not acceptable. And some people said, he must be a Wahhabi. In other words, anything that doesn't agree with you must be a Wahhabi. And you don't even know what it means. So if you really want to be one who can answer this question, who is your prophet? You have to understand to follow Muhammad, obey Muhammad, only then is he your prophet. And just saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is very good, but just saying it with no meaning won't help you. And wearing a kufi is very good. But there are a lot of people that wear hats all the time and it doesn't save them either. We have to know who is Muhammad and what he expects from us. And then we have to try our best to follow it. This is all included in saying that Muhammad is our prophet.